Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Miyagi Mornings. I think this is 87, 87 times we've gotten together for these morning chats. Um, today I want to talk to you about systems on your homestead, but a little bit differently than we usually do. And I think this is the place where it breaks down. I know it has for me, and I'm trying to kind of, as I've let things go a little crazy with how much I've done, start linking everything back together which would be the right way to do it from the beginning, but when you're kind of a, a mad scientist about what you're doing, it's easier to have this problem. Uh, and I know many of you, maybe you're not all mad scientists, but you have multiple systems and you might struggle with managing your homestead. And I think this maybe will help you with that. So here's where I'm coming from. Everything that you do that involves more than a couple parts, a couple design elements uh, that you purposely put together is some sort of a system. So if you're a chicken or a duck keeper, you probably have a system for that. You have a housing area, whether it's a containment yard, uh, an actual house that they get closed in at night, some way that you protect them from predators. You have a schedule that you keep when you go let them out. You have a way that you feed them. You have a way that you provide them with water. Uh, maybe you do a coop and run, a coop and double run. Maybe you do free range, maybe you do tractoring. But one way or another, there's a system that you run your chickens by. But conversely, you probably have a system by which if you keep dogs around your homestead, you know, as companionship, pets, security measures, all of those good things, there's a system for how you manage your dogs, a way that you feed them, a way that you water them, a way that you groom them, a way that you make sure they get enough attention because they're not a chicken, they're an animal that, you know, co cohabitates with humans. It's pretty much been bred over, over centuries now to be a companion to humans, so they need that. And then you've got garden. Well, you have a way that you manage it over your winter season, either you garden through or you cover crop or you tarp it or something like that. You have a way that you start your seeds, a way that you plant your new plants every year, a way that you harvest, a way that you uh, manage the harvest as it comes in. You have transitional periods where you go into summer and the fall and the winter. Um, and there's a, the whole system by irrigation, fertilization, etc. There's a system there. And what happens is, and you can keep going, right? If you have a wood shop and you build things, either as part of a side hustle or for your own use, you have a way that you lay out your shop and et cetera. And, and so there's just almost endless systems. And what I think we need to do to get our, our systems working for us instead of against us is we need to basically classify them. This is a system that needs to be managed daily, weekly, monthly, or as needed. Those are your two, you know, your four big classifications there. And then you need to de determine within those frequencies what needs to happen. And then you need to look at them. So a great way to do this, if you have a big whiteboard, would be a great way to do this. Some things to me just work. And I'm old, I understand. So many of you have like software or app management tools or something that maybe this works better for you. But for me, for this kind of thinking, because it's not, it, it, see to me, software is great for things you already know. I want to do this, then this, then this, then this, then this, like task management software or task management apps. Maybe that's a good place for this to go next. But when you're trying to create the connections and the process flow, going old school engineer here, you know, you take that big whiteboard and you, you start listing your systems. And then you start listing your frequencies. This is a daily management system, a weekly management system, a monthly or an as needed. And then you list all the things that need to happen in that management process. And you'll find some of your processes or some of your systems will be systems that require daily management. There are things that happen every day, but then they require weekly management. They require monthly management, right? And then they require as needed. Now, what would be as needed? Like if you had a shop or something, it's pretty obvious. If you only use it when you need things, well, that's as needed. But if you have an aquaponics system, there are things that happen that break and they need to be fixed. And then that leads to like a parts list and a procedure for when this thing fails. This is, this is its backup and this is how I repair it. And once you get all that down, then you can start to say, okay, uh, where is all this stuff located? What time of day is best to do this? You can start linking them together. You come up with a process flow that this is where I should start my morning management and where I should end it. And this is how these things are connected. And if you do that, you'll find that a lot of shit that you let go, that you let go way too long, because I know I do this. Like I'm constantly doing things on an as needed because they're not listed on a you know monthly management. Uh, one example is I have a aquatic system 
that will eventually I'll go out there and I'll see water levels not where they belong and the pump is just not running optimum. It's running too slow because it's clogged up with sludge or one of the return pipes is, is uh, clogged up with sludge. So I have a way that I deal with this. I just clean the pump and I hook up an air compressor to that return line with a little adapter I made and I blow 40, 50 pounds of air through it and, poof, and it cleans it out. Well, if I do that once a month, I never walk out there and find the problem because it's preemptive. So that's one of the things I need. And then you got to figure out, okay, so when, when do I have time to do this extra thing that's not part of the daily or weekly routine, right? This monthly or as needed thing, because then there's other as needed. As needed is not always something broke. Sometimes as needed is you just realize, hey, you know, even though this isn't on the schedule, it needs to be accelerated, right? So you kind of figure out where are the, where are the places in my week and in my month where I have the extra time to see these needs. And then you can build out a complete process flow for yourself. And I know that sounds like overkill, and it's one of those things we don't do it, and we know we should. And we just kind of like every day go do what needs doing. We usually end up with a few things becoming a natural process flow. You have to give your living creatures food and water every day. So you, you are forced into that process flow. But there's so many other things that could be weekly, right? or monthly that we just end up, ah, it's working, I don't have time today. If we create this schedule, then it puts us, we wake up on this particular day and we can look at that schedule. Here are the things that I need to do on my homestead today. And then we can look at them and say, here's the process flow I've developed. And then these are the things outside the process flow. These are the things that require a, a different type of attention. They're not daily. Right, so we got our daily process flow, and then we got our weeklies and our monthlies and our as neededs that come into them. And then we can look at those and we can prioritize those. We'll see if I don't fix this, something's gonna die. It just became a number one priority. So then we go through our process flow and then we go through our priority list. And that way, if anything falls off of the work ends or of the weekly or the monthly, we can just bump that to the next day. And since it wasn't a, a level one priority, it's a level two, it can, it can, if it can make it a second day, it's a level two priority. If it can't, it's a level one. If it's if it's that much of a level one, it may actually go before routine maintenance. It depends, right? But once you get that in place, it becomes really easy to manage everything. And this is the macro system that interconnects the micro systems. And guess where this comes from? Business. This is how you manage a business. You just got like some MBA level instruction on how to manage a business. You just take that process and that's you go into an office, you got 50 employees. Well, then you, if you're a manager of those 50 employees, that's exactly what you should be managing. If I've got three employees, Bill, Tom, and Frank, right? I can manage Bill, Tom, and Frank. I, I can micromanage them if I want to. I can go, I don't want to, but I'm firing you if I have to micromanage you, by the way. But I can. I can go and check on each one of them, let's say, every hour, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, and make sure they don't have any problems. And if they have any problems, it can either help them figure it out or correct the problem for them or put them in touch with who can or teach them how to use freaking Google or whatever they need to keep going. If I've got 50 employees, I'm way past the ability to do that. You know, I mean, just do the math. If I spend 15 minutes with 50 people, every, oh, I can't, right? It just doesn't work. Like, that's four people an hour, eight hours, 32 people. It's not going to work, is it? So what I have to do then is I have to break down all of the systems within. I don't have 50 people. You know, unless I'm running like a telemarketing service where all 50 people are sitting on the phone reading the same script every day. Like if I'm actually doing something productive with 50 people, I have many different things and processes those people are doing. And many, are many interactive edges between those processes, right? Or processy, whatever you want to call it, right? And so I need to manage the process, not the people. And then within that, I create a hierarchy where I have like division managers or group managers or team leaders or project managers or whatever. And then I manage that process flow. If it works with 50 freaking people who all have their own opinions and ideas and thoughts, then it's gonna work with things that are much more concrete. A pump and water does what a pump and water does, however you put it in place. It's gonna do that every day until it breaks down. So this process flow management you take this onto your homestead and your life will get so much easier. And I'm gonna tell you why you don't do it. Because you can get away without it, 
That's the first reason. And the second reason is the first time you do it, it's a pain in the ass. But it's such a time consolidator and time saver over time. It's worth the pain in the ass. It's worth taking a weekend, drink a couple beers, go out in your garage, fire up your whiteboard and, and, and map it out. It's no different than when somebody starts a business online. There's a lot of automation process that you can set up. For instance, when I when I go and do my my blog post every day, it automatically because I had a somebody set it up for me, disc our Discord server grabs it, posts it where it belongs on Discord, bridges over to the Telegram channel, posts it there, and the Telegram channel bridges over to the Telegram group and posts it there. And if I had automated processes that were available where I could get it onto MeWe and Float and all that way, I would too. They just don't have the setup for it yet that I'm aware of. There's no API interlink. When I send an email, that's all automated. When someone wants to join the email list, they just fill out a form and they join, join the email list. There's so many things that I do that are process automation or process procedure. So I write the blurbs and everything that goes into social media one time. It goes into an email. Boom, that's done. But then it's just cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. Right? All of this setting up, just simply setting up a group of text files that are templates to do stuff like that. It all takes time. And you, in any one day, you could be done with everything before you're done setting up the process. But once you set the process up, every day thereafter, you're getting your time back. And your time is your greatest form of currency. It is more important than any other thing. Dollars, Bitcoin, I don't care what, your time. Because when it comes to things like we're trying to be self-sufficient, and self-reliant on our homesteads, time is everything. There's a cost to putting something in place, to building a thing, to building a garden bed or building a greenhouse or whatever. But the currency that keeps it operational is time. So the more we can automate and make into a process, the better off we are. Anyway, guys, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, end today's show. You kind of got a twofer. You can take this and apply it to your homestead. You can take this and apply it to your business. Honestly, you can take this and apply it to anything that is multiple systems with an interactive edge. Take care, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with something else.